Today we will start something called analytic tableau and actually the interesting thing about the analytic tableau besides uh, besides various other technical things is that so besides various technical things the analytic tableau is interesting because it is actually invented by uh, a logician called Raymond Smullyan who is also a magician, a puzzlist and uh, he has written some fairly interesting books uh, on uh, solving of puzzles, on logical problems, on self reference and Raymond Smullyan. He is also, uh, I mean he has written some interesting books on uh, uh, on Gödel's incompleteness, on self reference and so on. One of his books is called, uh, what is the name of this book? So, that is self referential. There is another one on, uh, self reference is also closely linked to uh, self application in the lambda calculus. So, there is one on combinators called to mock a mockingbird. I mean you know, you know what a mockingbird is, um, a mockingbird is a, is actually an Australian bird called the kukubara. Uh, it is called a mockingbird because it sort of mocks itself you know in, in its sound. So, to mock a mockingbird is essentially like, uh, is essentially doing uh, self referential uh, calculations in combinatory logic or the lambda calculus. So, in addition to that Raymond Smullyan also has some interesting puzzle books uh, and he has a way of uh, developing logical theories just through puzzles you know. So, you have a sequence of problems and, uh, and uh, the solutions to those problems eventually lead to what he is uh, out to uh, or to talk about. It might either be about self reference or it might be about Gödel's incompleteness or it might be about uh, the lambda calculus whatever I mean and uh, so he has some fairly uh, interesting looking interesting ideas as far as books and uh, book writing is concerned and uh, also some interesting puzzles that he has invented and uh, he is also a magician who actually for many years in the 60s and 70s he actually held uh, uh, magic shows I mean with, uh, with, uh, with all the get up and so on and so forth in New York. Uh, so, he is a very interesting character, but besides that he is also a logician and he came up with this uh, analytic tableau method uh, in the 60s. Uh, so, it will look trivial especially from, prop from the point of view of propositional logic, but it is important to know it because practically all theorem proving methods nowadays uh, use the analytical, use some form of analytical tableau der uh, derived from Smullyan's tableaus, yeah. Okay. So, that is interesting, it is so it is quite fashionable to use tableaus for theorem proving. So, as far as resolution is concerned, uh, so uh, one of the things about uh, resolution was that you still had this mammoth formula. Uh, which uh, I mean an argument converted into a mammoth formula, uh, each component of I mean you had to convert it into a CNF uh, which sometimes can involve using distributivity which means you can it might expand the formula actually that you are going to uh, perform resolution on. And so, so this performing CNF is something that. So, even if resolution was better than the tautology checker in the sense that you could do this in a divided fashion, it is you still have to do, you still have to create a CNF before you can apply resolution. So, the other thing about resolution is that uh, the numbers of clauses and sizes of clauses could temporarily increase. So, in, in terms of the amount of space required for storage it can, they can actually increase. Of course, termination of resolution relied on the reduction of the number of atoms at each step of the resolution. And uh, other thing is for resolution to work really correctly, you need to clean up your initial set of formulas, so that you do not have debris lying around, uh, duplicates and so on and so forth. And 
otherwise what can happen is you can be you can get into a false sense of saying that you have not been able to resolve even though it might be a valid argument because of the fact that some of those formulas are still lying around which it should not have been there. So, it might uh, prevent your uh, deriving the empty clause ok. okay. So, the tableau method also does exactly like I mean like resolution the tableau method also checks for essentially for unsatisfiability. So, the resolution method preserves satisfiability. So, you start with an initial set of formulas delta and you do a resolution you perform a resolution on some atom you get a set of formulas delta prime. And if delta is satisfiable then delta prime is also satisfiable and so and that is how the method of resolution goes on. Uh, what we will do later is we will prove all these facts uh, that I am stating now, but essentially it preserves satisfiability and if you derive the empty clause uh, then essentially it means that it is unsatisfiable. So, if 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 delta prime is so if delta is satisfiable then delta prime is also satisfiable and therefore, if delta prime is unsatisfiable then delta is also unsatisfiable I mean that is that is how it works ok. Uh, so, essentially in each step of the method uh, satisfiability is preserved. So, the tableau method also exactly does that I mean it preserves satisfiability it does not preserve logical equivalence that is an important thing yeah. So, unlike resolution one of the things that uh, you save in the tableau method is that you do not have to deal with transformations or rewrite rules on uh, rewriting uh, mammoth formulae into some normal form. So, the necessity of a normal form is not there and so the the, ta the tableau method works directly on this of formulae. So, you want to prove that psi is a logical consequence of phi 1 to phi n uh, then you just negate psi and do not do any trans do not do any transformation take this list and your tableau method works directly on this list. And what the tableau method does is it actually uh, does a breaking up of compound formulae ok. So, so one thing is it is when it does the breaking up of compound formulae essentially uh, this for each formula that there is only a finite number of times you can up you can break it up into sub formulae. So, it uses a sub formula property which we will define later, but which you intuitively understand it is like a sub term and uh, you cannot do this forever right. So, you are already guaranteed that for these n plus 1 formulae once you have broken them all up the tableau will end I mean it is some it is some finite tree. So, there is no possibility of it going on forever that is one thing. So, termination is guaranteed in the tableau method uh, and the other thing that the tableau method does is that it relies on the symmetry between truth and falsehood. After all your model of truth had just this you could just think of them as just these two values belonging to a complete lattice and there is no reason to believe that one is uh, th there is no reason to have any asymmetry between them. So, the tableau method relies on a certain symmetry between truth and falsehood at a semantic level and it uh, so uh, certain versions of the analytic tableau are also called semantic tableau because of this reason yeah. But there are some differences between a semantic tableau and an analytical tableau but we will uh, we will come to that much later in the course ok. So, essentially at a semantic level you you, you rely on the symmetry between truth and falsehood uh, to check for satisfiability or unsatisfiability right. Uh, so, what does it do? So, the basic tableau facts are for, for a propositional logic they are absolutely trivial ok. So, you take this semantic for any truth assignment tau and any formula phi and psi it is these facts are obvious basically. Uh, so, so the symmetry between truth and falsehood says that I consider both cases right. So, we say so not phi is true under tau implies that phi is false under tau that is as simple as that right. Uh, 
So, similarly not phi is false under tau implies that phi is true under tau and you take um, phi and psi this if this is true then uh, so, so I am going to use uh, so now the colors encode language and matter language right. So, black is matter language ok. So, I use this and and this bar for and and or in the matter language right. So, that is why they are black in color. Uh, so, there is this this and and this or are the part of the uh, language of proposition logic right ok. So, in each case you consider both possibilities of truth and falsehood under tau and essentially for a compound formula see how to break it up in terms of the truth and falsehood of its components. So, so essentially the truth table method uh, you sort of render it in this way if you like yeah ok. But this is only the semantics right. Uh, there is of course, what happens as a result because of the uh, Smallian of course, chose only up to only f these four operators. Uh, we have of course, got this fifth operator also and this fifth operator you can see is a little cumbersome I mean it is yeah, but uh, uh, the biconditional is sort of a, uh, it breaks the symmetry of the rest of the thing and actually negation also breaks the symmetry of the rest of the thing. Yeah. So, these are basic and obvious tableau facts uh, for propositional logic, but what you actually do remember that any kind of logical deduct uh, logical reasoning is formal uh, is formal in the sense that it is purely symbolic right. I mean it is not it is not really got to do with its semantics, but it is only justified by its semantics. So, what you have are what are known as tableau rules ok. So, initially of course, Smullyan um, used this essentially to mark each formula. So, as true or false you know and uh, mark the conditions, but all occurrences of false can be replaced by negation and actually you can come up with this set of rules. So, here is a set of 9 rules ok. So, which these are just these are also forms of rewrite rules. These rules essentially uh, essentially preserve satisfiability in what way. Uh, so, in the case of double negation it is obvious. So, in the case of so, this is so, if I have a formula of the form phi and psi then phi must be and if if this this is satis if this is satisfiable then phi must be satisfiable and psi must be satisfiable. So, there is an here when I write a psi below phi I am actually creating uh, a path of conjunctions so, there is an implicit and between them if you like. So, if you look so if you look at not so now because of the symmetry between both truth and falsehood and falsehood essentially works out a negation right. So, we have rules for each of these operators and their negations right. So, the rule for not and essentially says that this formula not of phi and psi is satisfiable provided not phi is satisfiable or not psi is satisfiable. So, this bar is the or is a meta or ok. Now, what we have so, so, so similarly so, the, so this or here uh, translates to this meta or and similarly in this case this not of or actually translates to an and ok not phi and not psi. Um, the case of implication phi arrow psi is satisfiable if either not phi is satisfiable or psi is satisfiable. So, there is a so these so these rules so these rules so we can classify all these rules ok before that let us look at this uh, let us look at this last biconditional the biconditional both the biconditional and its negation 
are branching rules. Uh, the negation of the biconditional is just the exclusive or right. Okay, so, uh, so um, both of them are branching. So, essentially the rules, the structure of the rules is such that you have elongation rules like they are the AND rules. The AND rules also include not of or and uh, yeah and you have branching rules right. So, so each of these uh, so then double negation also can be regarded as an elongation rule because uh, well it does not branch. So, that is yeah. So, basically what what actually the biconditional rule actually expands the size of formulas that you have to be considered, but all other rules do not expand the size right. So, if you so if you think of in all in all the rules you think of the top as the, is the numerator and the bottom as the denominator then essentially the sizes of rules are non increasing I mean this the sizes of denominators are non increasing except in the case of this biconditional yeah right. So, which is a good reason why Smilian did not consider it because it sort of destroyed the beauty of his tableau yeah okay, but, but we since we are living with it we are going to live continue to live with it okay. So, what we are going to do so what what you essentially do is you apply a rule. So, you think of it as plain blank symbol pushing and you apply a rule. So, what you get is elongation and branching along and maybe with some elongation some branching and so on and so forth. So, what you get is a tree ok. So, a tableau is a tree I mean and actually I myself did not know it was till I learnt of Smullyan's tableau right. Okay. So, uh, a tableau is a tree and you take each path in this tree of what are what might be called unbroken formulae ok. So, there is another concept also there is an implicit concept of a formula being broken up which is what the original thing was doing. And when you break up a formula you can essentially discard the original formula because you you can you you just need to keep the denominator and you do you can discard the numerator right you are just flexing your muscles ok. So, the point is that so you have you are going to break up the formulas in some way and when you bre break up one formula by applying a rule uh, then you can discard the original formula right ok. So, a path of so since it is a tree I can consider the various paths on the tree. So, there is this the effect of applying a formula is to consume an old formula in the creation of new formulae right. Uh, so, a path of the tableau is closed if it contains a complementary pair essentially each path in the tableau represents a conjunction ok of formulae of unbroken formulae because that is enough that set of I mean the original formula is satisfiable provided some path is satisfiable right. So, some conjunction of unbroken formula is satisfiable right. If it is, but if it contains if a path contains a complementary pair then that path gets closed. Of course, that path might be a branch of something. So, only the path gets closed the branch does not get closed right because there might be other. So, the ancestors which are common to several branches remain ok, they still remain part of the uh, unbroken set of formulae of a different path. So, you look at each path and you close the path if it contains a complementary pair and essentially what you are saying is if I take all the unbroken formulae in this path and take their conjunction uh, then that is unsatisfiable, it is a contradiction right. So, in the case of branching what happens is supposing I take some I take some ancestor node and uh, I have already branched that ancestor is a common ancestor of two branches and if I am going to break up that ancestor then I have to distribute the denominator on all 
I have to replicate the denominator on all the branches, right? Okay. So, uh, so this the result of applying a tableau rule to an ancestor node has to be distributed in all branches of its descendants. Yeah. Okay. A tableau is closed if every path in the tableau is closed. Essentially, signifying that all paths are unsatisfiable, all possible conjunctions that you thought of are un unsatisfiable. Okay. So this is what happens. So so let, let's let's just take a let's just take a, uh, the example we did that time and uh, let's look at it. So uh, what I had yesterday was so I had this. Okay. So uh, basically, I had this. Uh, let's say this B. C not D uh, B and C arrow A, A and C arrow D. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so what what I did yesterday was I actually took the conjunctive normal form of this. This uh, this set and uh, uh, and I did the resolution, which ah uh, so last time what we had was this right, which is essentially the same thing yeah. Uh, we did this resolution last time. Uh, okay, so now we take this essentially oh this, so it's a different one. It's not the same one. Okay, uh, so so what we'll do is uh, so this uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a tableau. So, in the in the creation of a tableau, you can think of it this way. I start with let us say B, C, not D, B and C arrow A, A and C arrow D. Okay. So, basically it is a conjunction of all these, right. And base and what I want to know is I want to check whether it is inconsistent, whether it is whether it is satisfiable or not. Okay. So, we apply tableau rules, uh, let us okay. so, so the top three of course, they are literals in their basic form, there is no breaking up ever possible. So, you if you apply a tableau rule, you have to apply to one of the other two. Okay, so this rule. So if I apply the tableau rule to this one, then I I essentially get uh, not B and C, and I have this bar, right? And I immediately essentially have a branch. Now, actually throughout the proof, this branch is like the Berlin wall, I mean you cannot cross it yeah? uh, and what you have is you have A in this on this side, right. But you, you got this by applying the arrow rule on this formula, so this formula has been consumed. Okay. So, just think of it as this and now my tableau essentially, essentially this formula B and C arrow A can be discarded and now my tableau consists of all these other rules. Right. Okay. So, now what, what happens is I could actually do uh, uh, I, I could uh, this is a compound rule. Uh, I could actually apply the and uh, not of and to this rule uh, to this formula, and what I get is uh, I get not B, not C, and essentially I have another branch. Yeah, and I got this from this, so this gets discarded. Yeah. So now I have only these. Uh, of course, but now what has happened 
is that this this path has a complementary pair yeah and so essentially the path is closed okay and i signify the closure of the path by use putting a bottom here right that's it so now uh, and actually then what happens is this path is also closed right and so, so these two paths are closed and that leaves only this open path and therefore it allows me to uh, break up this formula okay and when i break this formula up i get uh, so now i have a tableau with just one path on in it uh, but now the breaking up of this formula will give me not of a and c and then r of d right and i have a fresh branching here right so this uh, d ah okay so fine so this d is has also gone and therefore i have i can close this path okay and that leaves only this i should also mention that this has been consumed right so this can be discarded uh, so what happens to this well i get uh, notice uh, this uh, the circled formulae are not consumed they are still unbroken yeah so, yeah Yes, you would have had to distribute it along all the paths. Otherwise, you are having. Uh, otherwise, you you would have gotten into trouble. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this one would be not of and. So this one would give me not a, not c, and of course, actually, it's a branching. Here, and uh, now this one. Uh, and uh, firstly this one has got consumed okay and secondly this one has got closed and then this one has also got closed because of lack of suitable colors yeah this has got closed along with this c so this by this gets closed and therefore essentially what you are saying is that um, all paths are closed so this tableau is a, is closed right and uh, this tableau is closed essentially means uh, therefore that you remember that uh, okay that this is something in the case of both resolution and tableau what have you what have you actually done you have taken a set of formulae and prove that they are, they are inconsistent let us say. So, so this set of formulae uh, was let us say phi 1 to phi n and a conclusion psi right. When you look at it as a set of formulae there is absolutely no reason why you should regard, regard it this way, just this way I mean you, there is absolutely no reason why you should think that this has to be only this. It could just as well, I could choose some phi i for example and I could claim that phi i minus 1, phi i plus 1 not psi. not phi i right
I mean, both these arguments would have yielded the same set of formulae, right? So, you are only proving that a set of formulae is inconsistent uh, and there could be many ways of setting up the argument. So, this could just as well have been another argument. Okay. Supposing in fact, in fact what, what you can show from the semantics is that if this is, this is a valid argument, if and only if this is a valid argument. Right. At the level of sets, I can permute things in any way, but and I can also pull them out on either side of the um, what is this? The the model symbol, uh, any way I like. Right. So it does not matter whether you're looking at this argument or this argument for any i. In fact, so they they all. I can move things on either side of this double turn style and all those arguments would give me the same set of formulae and if this set of formulae is unsatisfiable, it means all those arguments are valid. So, you take any argument, I can negate the conclusion and make that a hypothesis, take one of the hypotheses negate it and take it as a conclusion, right. And in either case the proofs are going to be the same and therefore the arguments are equally valid or equally invalid, right. I mean so, so that is uh, so that, that, that is one thing that this symmetry, this symmetry gives us. The other thing of course is uh, as he pointed out, um, the other thing is of course that you can we can create really slim tableau by ensuring that you use only elongation rules as far as possible. So, you start with this with an with essentially a, 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 a path of you the your uh, the starting point of your tableau is a path of formulae right. So, uh, apply only those uh, choose only those formulae which elongate and postpone the formulae which branch to as late as possible and that is a heuristic which will reduce the uh, size of the tree that you created. So, so as he said I mean so if, you had up, if you apply the branching rule at the first uh, itself then you are already branched and then you apply an elongation rule to one of the ancestors of that branching point, then you have to distribute the denominators into each of the branches and that increases the size of the uh, tree, right. And therefore, the size of the tableau that you are create construction uh, that you are constructing. And if you follow this heuristic of first applying only uh, elongation rules to the tableau uh, to the formula in the tableau. And only after you have exhausted all possibilities of elongation do you apply the branching rules, then you can have essentially a fairly slim tablet, right. And um, of course, it does not matter in either way, you are anyway bounded by the size of the individual formulas. So, you your tableau anyway has going to have only a certain fixed size that in terms of in terms of the lengths of the paths. What your what this heuristic is essentially saying is I can do a factoring of the paths of the common elements of the paths by delaying the use of the branching rules and not starting the, uh, and uh, applying only elongation rules wherever possible, right. So, of course, so what happens is, uh, so the, the thing is that the tableau, so by this is actually the only heuristic you require. The other interesting thing about the tableau uh, is that it is syntactic, syntact it is based on a form on something like structural induction, right. So, if you look at, uh, if you look, uh, so it is not just, uh, it is it's like some of the SOS rules that uh, you must have done in programming languages, they were all based on structural induction on the 
on the uh, on the operator right i mean you so this is also if you look upon not and and not or and so on as single operators which is fair enough because uh, if you are looking at the symmetry of 0 and 1 then uh, not and is also a binary operator not or is also a binary operator so you have essentially chosen these operators and what you have done is based on the root operator in the abstract syntax tree you are applying a rule and that is deterministic it is unique right so there is a unique deterministic way of actually applying these rules the only way the determinism gets destroyed is because you are starting with some with you, you could you could be permuting you could permuting this starting list of formulas in any way that is the only place where there is non determinism right and the only other place where there is some non determinism is actually the choice of formula you take uh, for applying a rule. But once you have chosen a formula the results are completely deterministic the result of that is completely deterministic these are important these are important considerations why they affect the complexity of both the space and the time complexity of the uh, tableau method the other thing you you will see is that this is what makes the tableau rules amenable to deterministic proof theoretic uh, <coughs> procedures take the notion of a proof right in any typical situation in any branch of mathematics given a certain given a certain theorem statement i have if i have to prove it there are a bewildering number of possibilities of how you can go i mean in many proofs there is this notion of if you don't get this crucial step man you're stuck you are never going to get the proof right but that is because of the extreme amount of non determinism that is available in the proof procedures in our normal uh, reasoning. If we can restrict the reasoning to certain deterministic procedures and here the deterministic procedures are entirely defined by the operators at the root. Then there is a much better possibility of actually running proof procedures yeah so we will do formal proof theory from a logical viewpoint and that time you will actually appreciate that sometimes what happens is uh, one of the reasons you keep circling without getting the main result is because of the fact that there is a bewildering variety of possibilities if you do not go in a syntactically structured fashion yeah whereas if you have unique rules uh, we will see another proof system which has unique rules and from which actually the tableau was inspired. Uh, if you have unique rules then the number of the degree of determinism the degree of the degree of non determinism greatly reduces and you have deterministic and goal directed proof procedures uh, which therefore the moment the amount of branching reduces your complexity also reduces remember that. If the number of possibilities is large initially uh, then your both your space and time complexity get multiplied by that factor of by that branching factor right whereas if you if you have deterministic procedures then uh, uh, your uh, space and time complexity get narrowed down only to that determinism so here that the degree of non determinism is just in the in the possibility of what which formula are you going to choose for the purpose of elongation for example yeah right okay so there are certain other formal things that we need to do uh, which now that we have done two or three methods of proof uh, from a purely implementation point of view we have to formalize them and uh, we have to do them also uh, we have to prove what are known as uh, soundness and completeness of these rules uh, and that will set the setting of it will complete the setting of all concepts that we require before we get on to first order logic right. So, we have to so I will uh, so I will do that next week the soundness and completeness of both resolution and uh, tableau rules 
I won't do it for the tautology checker, but uh, for these two at least I will and then we will come up with the notion of a calculus and the soundness and the completeness of the calculus and how uh, what are the kinds of uh, proof methods that we require uh, in order to prove soundness and completeness. Yeah. Okay, so I will stop here at this moment. Mm -hmm.